Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Revision video. In this video, we're going to focus in on algebra and specifically equations containing thirds. So as part of this video, we're going to look at linear equations, quadratic equations, and also irrational roots of quadratic equations. So example one, let's look at a linear equation containing thirds. So given that x minus root 32 is equal to root 128 minus 5x, find the value of x, where x is an element of or, so the real numbers, give your answer in the form of a root 2, where a is an element of n, i.e. the natural numbers. So this came from the actual Leaving Cert paper. And although it looks a little bit complicated, we have a very straightforward linear equation. The number which we're used to is instead irrational rather than rational. Um, so what we're going to do is get all of our letters on one side and the numbers on the other. So let's start with our x minus root 32 is equal to root 128 minus 5 x. So I'm going to add a 5x to both sides, so I get 6x here, and I'm going to add the root 32 to both sides. Now, um, if you haven't already revised irrational numbers and thirds in general, I've linked the video in the description below. Because there's no letter underneath the square root, we can use our calculator to do a lot of this work. So you can use your calculator to simplify that 1, 2, 8. <clears throat> excuse me, that root 128 and the root 32. When you add them together, you get 12 root 2. So I get 6x equals 12 root 2. Just as normal, if I want to get x, I divide both sides by the coefficient. So I'm dividing both sides by 6. When I divide both sides by 6, I end up with 12 divided by 6, which is 2 root 2. Now, just quick revision for root 128. If you put that into your calculator and press equals, it will simplify that to 8 root 2. Now, how it does that is it splits it in to its factors, where one of the factors is a square number. So one of the factors of 128 is 64, and the other one is 2, which we can then break down into the square root of 64 square root of 2, which simplifies to 8 root 2. You don't need to do it in this question. You don't need to show all that work, but that's where it's coming from. So example two, a quadratic equation containing thirds. Now, this one's a little bit trickier. This is from a mock paper. Now, what I always suggest to students is when you are drawing your own square root to actually close the square root. So what I mean by that is this equation is x squared minus two root three. So I do a little closing on that square root. And the reason I do that is so that it doesn't look like that x is underneath. So actually that minus two root three, that's the coefficient of x. If you look very closely, that x is not under the square root. So really all we're dealing with here is a normal quadratic where one of the coefficients just happens to be a square root. So we can't use guide number or um, factorization in this case because we can't really factorize our root. So instead we're gonna go straight to the minus b or quadratic formula. So that's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So our a is one, our b is minus two root three, and our c is minus three, or sorry, minus nine. So then we have x is equal to minus b, so minus minus two root three, plus or minus the square root b squared, so minus two root three squared, that bracket is exceptionally important here, minus four ac all over two a. And that can go straight into the calculator. Let's put our plus in and let's put our minus. Just some tips when you're putting it into the calculator. First thing you want to do is press your fraction button, then work into the top line and then move down into the bottom line. Make sure that everywhere we've written a bracket, you put in the bracket to ensure that everything is squared properly. If you get an error, it may be got to do with your brackets, especially 
underneath the square root and um, make sure that the bracket is outside of that square root. So my first answer when I put in the plus is three root three. And the second answer is x equals minus root three. Now they've asked us, give our answers in the form of a root three where a is an element of q, so it's a rational number, which we've done. What's interesting to note here is if we solve a quadratic using the quadratic formula, or that minus b formula, and we leave our answer in third form, what we tend to get is like something like 2 plus root 3 and then 2 minus root 3. So they tend the answers to mirror each other and those signs simply change. And they're known as the conjugate. And we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in the next example. But what's interesting to note here is that the answers are not the conjugates of each other. And the reason for that is because the coefficients are not rational numbers so then the answers don't follow this if you've already done complex numbers you might be able to link that to what you've learned about equations that have complex or non-complex coefficients example three so let's look at what happens when we're given the irrational root and how we can work with that so here there's a few questions so the first thing is root 2 minus 1 is a root of x squared plus bx plus c equals 0 where b and c are elements of z so they're integers the first thing they want us to do is to find the value of b then the value of c and hence find the other root so roots can get confusing when we have irrational roots. So just remember that all roots can be written as x equals root 2 minus 1. So x equals, that's how we write our roots. If we have a root of any kind of equation or function, subbing it in should make the function equal 0, or in this case, the equation should balance. So I'm going to sub that in. So I get root 2 minus 1 squared plus b times root 2 minus 1 plus c equals 0. So I'm going to work this like I would in algebra. You can work it with your calculator, that's absolutely fine, but I'm going to use it like we would usually square a binomial. So square the first, I get 2, twice the first by the second, so I end up with minus 2 root 2, and then square the last, so I get plus 1, plus b root 2, you can write root 2 b either, uh, minus b plus c equals 0. So what we're trying to do is to solve for b and c. What you might notice is we actually have two unknowns, um, and we've only one equation. So usually we say with two equations, or with two unknowns, we need two equations. But let's tidy this up and see what we can, let's see what we can do. So I can add a two and a one. So I end up with minus two root two plus b root two plus three minus b plus c equals zero. Now, I can use this one equation to solve it because there's two parts of this equation. I have the irrational parts here. So I'm going to pull those out. So the irrational parts and then I have the rational parts. Now because of how these numbers work, the rational and the irrational won't be able to interact with each other. So for example, we have an equal zero here on the right hand side. So the irrational pieces will have to cancel each other out because if they didn't, then there would be an irrational piece on the right hand side, which means that minus two root two plus b root two, that has to equal zero. So you can look at this and maybe get the answer, but we can ignore the root twos or divide across by root two. And we find that actually the value for B is two. Now again, you might just be able to look at that and go, well, B would have to be two for the two irrational pieces to cancel each other out. So then the rational pieces, three minus B plus C, they should all equal zero as well. Now my B is minus two, so I get 1 plus c equals 0, so c equals minus 1. So I've done the first two parts of that. I figured out b and I figured out c. 
So now that I know B and C, I can rewrite my quadratic as x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And the last thing I've been asked to do is hen. So now that I've done that, find the other root. So I'm going to use um, the quadratic formula or minus B. So Bx plus C equals 0. We have A equals 1. B equals, we worked out, 2. C equals minus 1. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that can go straight to the calculator. So you're going to have a plus and a minus. So the first one we get is minus 1 plus root 2. And the second answer we get is minus 1 minus root 2. Now, we have found both roots, but we were actually given one of the roots in the question. So this is the one that we were given. So did we need to work through and to solve that using the quadratic formula? The answer is no, there was another way. So because we know that the root is root 2 minus 1, um, we can work with this and know that the coefficients of the quadratic are all rational. They're actually integers because the square x squared, the coefficient is one. And we know that b and c, we were told initially that they were integers. So what you could do is rewrite this as the rational piece plus the irrational piece and know that the second root would have to be what we call the conjugate. So the conjugate is where we change the sign of the irrational piece. So it will be minus one, that stays the same, and this changes to minus root two. Now you meet the conjugate in a few different places. The conjugate um, is quite important when we want to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. Again, if you haven't revised thirds and irrational numbers in general, the video is linked in the description below. And um, this also strongly links into the complex number section where we use that term conjugate as well when we're talking about the imaginary piece, which is, as it boils down, a, a square root. So all of this is interlinked. So you could have, without working out, without going through the minus b formula, you could have looked and said, well, if I know one root, I can simply write down the other root.